Hello and welcome everyone to Earth Science Asimeth classes. In this video lecture series, we will be studying about the stratigraphy and this lecture particular deals with the principles of a stratigraphy. Now let's see the content distribution. So in lecture one, we will study about the concept and definition of a stratigraphy and its historical development and also the basic principles of stratigraphy. In the second lecture, we will study the stratigraphic contacts and unconformities and we will also study how to collect the stratigraphic data. So in simple word, stratigraphy is study of a stratified rocks which is deposited layer by layer. This includes classification, interpretation and correlation of a stratified rocks in time and space and that helps us to interpret the geological history of the earth. The term stratigraphy was coined by French geologist D. Orbigny in 1849. The word stratigraphy is combination of two words that is stratum and the Greek word graphia that refers to description of all rock bodies forming the earth's crust and their organization into distinctive, useful and mappable units. So now let us discuss the basic concepts, definition and historical development of a stratigraphy. The stratified rocks always display a record of past geological events. A stratigraphy involves the studies directed towards interpretation of these events. So stratigraphy is a branch of geology which deals with the study of these layered rocks, their sequences and their relationship with each other. Stratigraphic studies deals primarily with the sedimentary rocks but it may also include layered igneous rocks like lava flows. It also involves the relationship of intrusive igneous rocks with respect to the sediments. Branches of stratigraphy. Traditionally up to 1960 there were three branches which are most popular that were lithostratigraphy, biostratigraphy and chronostratigraphy. The lithostratigraphy involved the subdivision, correlation and interpretation of sediments and rocks on the basis of their lithological characters. Whereas the biostratigraphy dealt with the recognition, subdivision and correlation and interpretation of sediments and sedimentary rocks on the basis of their fossil content. And in chronostratigraphy, we do the recognition, subdivision and correlation, also the interpretation of sediments and sedimentary rocks on the basis of their time of formation. During 60s, two new branches of a stratigraphy came into existence. So these were the seismic stratigraphy, the one which involves recognition, subdivision, correlation and interpretation of sediments and rocks on the basis of seismic reflection data. The another was magnetic stratigraphy. This involves the recognition, subdivision, correlation and interpretation of sediments and rocks on the basis of Earth's magnetic reversal records stored within the iron bearing minerals and sediments. The sequence stratigraphy involves actually the relationship between the sedimentation and sea level changes. Apart from that, higher resolution stratigraphy also gained popularity. It includes the event stratigraphy, which is based on the marker events or events horizon. Cyclostratigraphy, this is based on short period high frequency sedimentary cycles. And chemostratigraphy, that is based on the study of stable isotope ratios of the sediments and sedimentary rocks. Historical developments in stratigraphy. Stratigraphy reached the modern level of development through a series of discoveries and observations made from time to time. The foundation was laid by Nicholas Steno, who is regarded as father of stratigraphy. It was Steno who proposed the laws of superposition and also introduced the principles of initial horizontality and lateral continuity. In 1669, thereby laying down the basis of a stratigraphy as a science. While John Player popularized the Hutton's principles of uniformitarianism, it was William Smith who first proposed the concept of layering in the sedimentary rocks. He also introduced the term strata to denote these layers, thus giving the name to the science of a stratigraphy. That is derived from this particular term. 
Smith also published the first geological map of the Great Britain. Almost simultaneously, the concept of layering in the sedimentary rocks and significance of different fossils for the dating of strata were elaborated in France by Alexander Brogniard. It was Charles Lyell who published the book Principles of Geology, wherein he elaborated the principles on uniformitarianism and also defined the significance of stratigraphic sequences. In recent years, stratigraphy has evolved considerably with the dating of rocks through radiometric and magnetostratigraphic techniques. Use of chemical indicators and isotopes has also revolutionized the method and applications in stratigraphic studies. For the purpose of uniformity of approach, an international subcommission on stratigraphic classification has been established by the International Union of Geological Sciences, which lays down the applications and principles from time to time depending upon new findings and discoveries. Now we will look to the basic principles of stratigraphy because stratigraphy is based on a set of principles that govern the processes of sedimentation. The sedimentation is the result of accumulation of rock material carried by different agencies like water, wind, glacier and deposition in basin. The mechanism of sedimentation and accumulation of other stratified rocks like lava flows determines the principles of stratigraphic studies. So let's look at the principles of a stratigraphy. This includes order of superposition, original horizontality, principle of lateral continuity, cross-cutting relationships, principles of inclusion, principle of unconformities, fossil successions, and lastly, uniformitarianism and catastrophism. It is obvious that when sediments get deposited in a basin, they go down to the bottom layer by layer. The bottommost layer is thus first to deposit. This process continues throughout the course of deposition as more and more sediments are deposited in the subsequent layers. Thus, in a sedimentary sequence, the beds or layers at the bottom are deposited first, hence they are the oldest. The beds overlying them are younger. Accordingly, in a sedimentary basin, it is possible to determine that which are the older beds and which are the younger beds. This principle illustrates that in an undeformed sedimentary sequence, the beds are younger and younger as we go from bottom to top. This principle is known as order of superposition that constitutes the basics of principles of stratigraphy. The sedimentary rock occurs in all orientations like horizontal, dipping at various angles or maybe even folded. It is obvious they could not have been deposited in that condition of tilting or folding. Sediments in the basin are always deposited in a horizontal manner irrespective of the shape of the basin. The tilting and folding are the structural changes that takes place after the rocks are deposited and consolidated. So for the study of rocks, you have to visualize the nature in their present deposition, but assuming that they were deposited virginally in a horizontal fashion. And this is known as principle of original horizontality. In basin, sediments are spread in all the directions during the course of deposition. But when traced, they show lateral continuity because they deposit horizontally as well as in laterally continuous manner. When we study sediments, we often find that in a valley, deposits cannot be seen as we can see over here in the diagram. But they are exposed again across the valley as we can see from this diagram. This is because subsequent erosion along the valley has removed these sediments but virginally they were deposited in continuity which extends up to the limits of the basin. So the sediments are deposited in a laterally continuous manner unless the edge of the basin is encountered or 
sediment supply is sufficient. Cross cutting relationship principle. The structure which cuts is younger and the one which gets cut is older. The basic principle of cross cutting relationship is when something cuts across a sedimentary sequence. It is always younger than the sequence. In other words, all cross cutting features are produced after the sediment is deposited. The cross cutting feature may be a structural feature like a fault as we can see in this diagram or it means intrusion like a dike as we can see in this diagram. It could also be a feature of erosion like a valley or break in deposition. All of these changes are brought about after deposition of sediment has taken place. Sedimentary rocks are often made up of clast or fragment of older rocks. They are carried by river water or by any other medium and deposited in a basin. After deposition, these clasts get consolidated into rock. These clasts change size from very fine silt to fragments of gravel and can be termed as inclusions in the sedimentary rocks. In lava flows, there can also be some inclusions and they are known as genoliths, as we can see in the diagram. The principle of inclusion is that, that they are older than the rock in which they are deposited. It is obvious that because they are derived from denude or pre-existing rocks, that's why the inclusions are always older, means the rock which contains inclusion is younger than the inclusion and the inclusions are older. When sediments are deposited continuously, they constitute a sedimentary sequence and this type of continuous deposition is known as confirmable deposition. Very often it happens that there is a break in sedimentation and then it creates a surface of erosion and non-deposition and this surface is called unconformity. The break in sedimentation can take place due to non-availability of sediment or to the filling up of the basin. Alternatively, the basin may be uplifted and hence there is no sedimentation. This break may last for a brief period of time or for a longer period of time. In former case, it is difficult to locate on unconformity, but if this break is longer, then the unconformity can be located by evidences of erosion or changes in the angle of inclination of the beds. Most sedimentary rocks bear fossils that are remains of organisms of the past. But the type and species of organisms that keeps changing from time to time. And we know that mostly the evolution is progressed in nature as a result if we analyze the rocks of the past we get some ancient organisms. And if we are keep on analyzing the rocks of younger and younger sequences we get the fossils of more evolved organisms as we can see from this diagram that in Cambrian we have shielded like organisms. These are the fishes which appeared around Cambrian to Ordovician time and humans appeared around tertiary quaternary base. So if we are analyzing the rocks on the basis of presence of the, their fossil content, they can be correlated from the rocks of another area as well. We find no vestige of beginning, no prospect of an end. These were the original statement by James Hutton. This states that processes which are operating today at present on the earth like sedimentation and erosion, they were same in the past as well. These processes over prolonged period of time were responsible for changes that have taken place on the earth. The guiding maximum for understanding the historical evolution of earth under this principle as proposed by James Hutton is study of present is key to the past. It is worth mentioning that the intensity of these processes have changed over time. For example, the Paleocene Eocene period was the period of thermal maximum and if we see the Pleistocene time, this was the period of global cooling. 
So definitely because of the changing processes, these climatic changes are also brought about. The uniformitarianism as we know is a slow process and takes these brings about changes over a prolonged period of time. However, we have also noticed that there are some changes on the earth which takes place suddenly through some catastrophic events. So catastrophic events are also important together with the uniformitarianism. So earth history is consists of longer period of gradual and uniform changes, but it is followed by occasional sort catastrophic events. So in the stratigraphy lecture one, we have studied about the stratigraphy, its historical development and fundamental concepts of stratigraphy. In the next coming lecture, we will study about stratigraphic contacts and also the collection of data or collection of stratigraphic data from the field. If you have liked the video, please like, share and subscribe. And if you wish to join our gate batch, you can contact on the given number. The gate batch is operating at very minimal cost and it is mainly focused on numerical prospects of gate and CSIR. Thank you. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat.